Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and this time we are looking at a small vehicle from 1984. I'm talking, of course, about the one-man VTOL, the Skyhawk. For some reason, I only picked up the Skyhawk recently, despite the fact that I have most other 1984 vehicles. I'm not really sure why I waited quite so long to get the Skyhawk. It's not rare. It's not expensive on the aftermarket. I just sort of overlooked it. The Sky Skyhawk is a very important and prominent vehicle in the G.I. Joe universe, and I'm very happy to have one now, so let's give the Skyhawk a very good, thorough review. This is the Skyhawk. On the box that it came in, it was referred to as the One Man VTOL. VTOL, of course, standing for Vertical Takeoff and Landing. It was first introduced in 1984. It was also sold in 1985. It was discontinued in 1986. And in 1986, G.I. Joe got a jet that kind of replaced this. It was the X-30 Conquest. Also in that year, this vehicle was recolored and packaged in the Sears exclusive exclusive Dreadnought Air Assault. The jet that G.I. Joe had before this one was the Sky Striker, introduced the year before in 1983, and the Sky Striker is huge. It really dwarfs this Skyhawk, and I think the Skyhawk was a nice lower cost alternative to the Sky Striker, maybe for some kids who couldn't afford the more expensive Sky Striker. There were a lot of other aircraft introduced in 1984. There was the Shark, which was a jet submarine. It was a jet that could go underwater. I always consider that more of a naval vessel than a, a pure jet. Uh, we also got the Cobra Rattler, which was a larger aircraft, and really that was meant to be more of a rival to the Sky Striker. In 1984, there was a Cobra aircraft that was comparable in size to the Skyhawk, and that was the Cobra Claw. It was more of a flying wing kind of jet pack. It was a little bit smaller than the Skyhawk, but more in the Skyhawks class than the much larger Cobra Rattler. 1984 was a great year for aircraft in G.I. Joe. The Skyhawk was worth two flag points and it did not come with an action figure. Let's look at the parts and the features of the Skyhawk, starting with the missiles. It had two missiles and they pegged in underneath here uh, to the skids. Oh, geez. These missiles had very small slots and they pegged into very small pegs on these skids, so they didn't stay on very well. These are always popping off. You have to be really careful of that. The blueprints call these signal processing air-to-surface rockets, or SPATs. As far as a real-world weapon these might be based on, these look to me a little bit like the AGM-122 sidearm missiles, but the sidearm missiles would have another set of fins up here on the front rather than just the ones on the back. The box for the Skyhawk calls these Sidewinder missiles, and there are other Sidewinder missiles in G.I. Joe. There were the Sidewinder missiles that came with the Sky Striker. As you can see, it's pretty comparable in size, but uh, the Sky Striker Sidewinders are, are pretty different. In the front and underneath, it has what the blueprints call twin 20 millimeter thunderclap cannons, and these swing. They swing in unison, uh, and those look pretty good. They have some some detailing on them, and those look not bad at all. On the sides, sculpted on here, we have what the blueprints call fuselage-mounted Vulcan 20 millimeter cannons, and those look pretty good too. This is a pretty well-armed uh, aircraft for the size that it is. We have an opening canopy, and this canopy, uh, it's just a frame. There's no clear plastic uh, glass pieces in there. Uh, just a frame, and it opens, so that's how you get your action figure in and out. The cockpit has very little detail. There's this joystick here, which I guess the pilot is supposed to control the craft with, but uh, no instrument panel uh, sculpted on the inside. However, inside the canopy, there is an instrument panel sticker. I'll show you how to place the driver in. I'm using Duke because in the comic book, Duke piloted the Skyhawk. I'm using my busted crotch Duke, um, and it's pretty simple. There's a, a back peg that fits in the hole in the back of the action figure. You just peg him in, uh, make sure his legs are bent well enough to uh, so his feet fit inside, and you can place his hand on the little joystick remote controller. Uh, and then uh, 
Close the canopy and there you go. There's a name on the side of the canopy on the sticker, uh, Lieutenant Frederick Bama with some kill marks. And this is a bit of a mystery as to who this Lieutenant Frederick Bama is. That is not the name of any member of the G.I. Joe team. So I put this question to the G.I. Joe discussion Facebook group and one answer that came up, one possibility, was that this might be referring to a Lieutenant Frederick Funderburg Jr who was a pilot in World War II, and that fits, this is an aircraft, uh, and he was a Tuskegee Airman, uh, meaning that he trained in Tuskegee, Alabama, so this Bama would be an Alabama reference, and I really like that answer. It sounds plausible, plus it's got a nice story behind it. However, Ron Rudat, who was a chief designer at Hasbro and designed a lot of G.I. Joe uh, action figures, uh, says this Bama was probably referring to him or Larry Hama, the writer of the G.I. Joe comic book. And if that's how Mr. Rudad remembers it, that's probably true. But I like the other answer better. Uh, it's got a nice story, and why let the truth get in the way of a nice story? Now we get to the skids, the infamous skids, and these are terrible. These are almost always broken, and in fact, on mine, they are broken. Uh, they're held together with just one little thin piece of plastic, uh, one single bar, uh, and it just slots in right here in the back and as you can see mine is broken it's split right there and that's a very frequent break really this is not a good design there really should have been at least two support bars on these skids and you know it just isn't sturdy enough for the way most kids play with their toys and so uh, that is is often broken uh, in fact you're gonna probably play, pay a premium uh, to get a Skyhawk that doesn't have broken skids and if you get a Skyhawk that doesn't have broken skids, you have to be careful not to break them yourself because they are incredibly fragile. Each of the skids has a foot peg, one on each side, and those foot pegs can be used to carry other figures. Just put the peg in the hole in the bottom of the feet, and now you can carry two more figures in addition to the one that rides on the inside. I think it's funny that this is called uh, a one-man VTOL, but in fact it's a three-man VTOL. Back here we have the engines, uh, some jet engines, and these do tilt. Uh, they tilt uh, upward for the VTOL, the vertical takeoff and landing, so it can take off and land straight up and down like that. And then when it's in flight and it needs to go forward, uh, the engines tilt and are horizontal for horizontal flight. These engines are another bit of a weakness. Uh, they just clip on here to this one single clip and it doesn't look very good. It doesn't have any kind of uh, engine cover or anything like that to cover up the, the plastic clip that holds them on. And plus, once they get worn down a little bit, uh, they just flop around. They don't uh, turn like they should. They don't tilt like they're supposed to. So I put a piece of uh, clear tape uh, on mine to help uh, add some friction. Uh, it doesn't look very good and I probably could fix that and make that look a little bit better but I, I don't want to because this clip is actually kind of thick and as I take the engines out uh, it puts a lot of strain on this clip and it's got some white plastic stress in there. I'm worried that I'm going to break the clip. There's some nice detail on the inside of the the engine there and the intake that looks pretty nice now this looks pretty cool and it looks like it would function as a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft however I'm pretty sure this would not work in real life uh, for one thing uh, if the center of gravity is a little bit too far forward which it looks like it might be especially with a pilot in there instead of lifting straight up it's going to tilt over and eventually you know flip over on its top and that's not going to help you very much also uh, dang it Ugh. Stay on. Stay on. Also, as it tilts, uh, the jet blast is going to hit these support fins right here and uh, I'm no jet scientist but I'm pretty sure that wouldn't work. Now we get to the side stabilizer planes and the stabilizer fin up here on the top and these things are ridiculous. They will fall out uh, at the slightest breeze. Uh, they, they do not, they have done nothing but fall out on me as I've been shooting this video and it's really infuriating. They do not clip in. You're just supposed to slide them 
them in and they do not stay in worth anything. Uh, just having these clip in instead of slot in like that would make this a much better vehicle because you can't really play with it and fly it around like that without, without popping one of these things off. Same deal with this top fin. It just frictions in there. Uh, you can get it to wedge in pretty well, but it's not going to help you. You know, if you play with this for a little while, if this were in the hands of a, of a kid, this thing would be popping out 50 times a day. Uh, it just doesn't want to stay in there very well. Here's the back end of the Skyhawk. You can see, dang it. Here's the back end of the Skyhawk. You can see how, how the engines tilt from the back. Isn't that lovely? I have to take a break from the review. I know the toy is just a piece of plastic. It is not trying to piss me off. It's not trying to do anything. It's not alive. It doesn't have a brain. It's just a toy. It's just a toy that falls apart very easily. Even though the Skyhawk did not come with an action figure, I like to display it with my broken crotch Duke. This is the one that got the Bobbit operation. And I like to use this Duke because my other Duke that's not broken is complete, has all of his accessories. I don't have all the accessories for this one, so he gets to pilot the Skyhawk uh, and maybe nobody will notice the fact that his crotch has been glued back on. Uh, so I put Duke in there and just I kind of like to leave the canopy open actually So let's look at the Skyhawk overall in the G.I. Joe comic book the Skyhawk was introduced in issue number 24 and the artist for that issue was Russ Heath and Russ Heath is a legendary comic book artist and He drew a lot of the models that were used for the G.I. Joe animated series in that issue The Skyhawk was piloted by Duke and Storm Shadow helped Cobra Commander escape on the Cobra Claw. The Skyhawk featured very prominently in the G.I. Joe animated series, and any member of the G.I. Joe team could fly one of these things. It did only feature a single uh, joystick controller, so the controls of the Skyhawk must be very simple, like video game controls, so anyone could just jump in and take off. The green color definitely suggests it's intended to be a low-flying infantry support aircraft, and the fact that it comes with air-to-surface missiles also kind of supports that. I really like the green color. It's very military looking. Uh, it definitely looks like something G.I. Joe would use. And even though this is not a realistic uh, aircraft, I don't think this would work in real life for the reasons that I mentioned. Um, this is what I would call pseudo-realistic. Uh, it's definitely not a real-world vehicle, but it's made to look like it could plausibly work in the real world. Uh, there's nothing too fantasy or science fiction about it, uh, so you could imagine this as a real thing. I really don't mind the pseudo-realistic G.I. Joe vehicles, although I prefer the more realistic ones. These pseudo-realistic vehicles gives us a little bit of fantasy uh, without going overboard and too far into the science fiction. The main knock I have against this vehicle is not with the aesthetics. The aesthetics of the design uh, are great. The problem is with the engineering. It is far too fragile. It is very fragile. Oh, so fragile. Uh, these skids are definitely under-engineered. They always break, and every bit of this thing just wants to fall off. These uh, side planes, the top fin, the missiles even, those drop off if you're not too careful. Uh, you just have to be careful about every uh, part of this vehicle. So if you have one, you just don't want to mess around with it too much. You put this on your shelf, and you forget it, because if you try to, if you try to manipulate it in any way, way, uh, something's going to fall apart. The Skyhawk is great to look at as long as you never, ever touch it. That was my review of the 1984 G.I. Joe Skyhawk. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're thinking of getting a Skyhawk, I hope you found this video informative. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. I've got a lot of great new G.I. Joe toy reviews coming up. You don't want to miss them. And don't forget to like the Facebook page. You get a lot of updates there you don't get anywhere else. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week with another vintage. G.I. Joe toy review. Cobra Commander, he is the enemy. He's the enemy of G.I. Joe. He's escaping! He's escaping in the Cobra Claw. Get the new jaws and get him aboard the Skyhawk. Introducing Duke, Roadblock, and Spirit. G.I. Joe, American hero. G.I. Joe is there. Cobra Commander.
Cobra Commander got away! But we captured Storm Shadow. Yo, Joe! G.I. Joe Skyhawk. Joe and Cobra figures and Cobra claws sold separately from Hasbro. Stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on.